spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. I would like to tell you a story from the Gospel of St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited. Now, when the wine ran out, his mother came to Jesus and said, They have no wine. And Jesus said, Woman, of what concern is that to you or to me? My hour has not yet come. And Mary said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there, there were six stone water jars that were used in the Jewish rites of purification. Each held about 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said, fill the stones with water, jars with water. So they did. They filled them to the brim. Then Jesus said, draw some out and take it to the chief steward. And they took it. Now when the chief steward tasted the water that had become wine and not knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the bridegroom and said, everybody serves the good wine first and saves the inferior wine for when all the guests have become drunk. But you have saved the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Young folks, to come on up for our chat here on the steps of the altar. Oh my golly, it's been forever since I've seen you guys. Come on up. We haven't talked forever, ever, and ever. Come on down. Okay. How is everybody today? Tissues, yes. My sermon's a real tearjerker, so I mean, no, 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 no. We'll talk about them in just a minute, but how is everybody today? Did you look outside? Did you look outside the windows? What do you see? It's been raining for three days. There's a story in that, but we won't go into that. Okay, it's been raining for three days. I was ready to build the ark. Remember the ark? When the world flooded? Yes. So my next question is, does anybody know what today is besides Sunday? What? It's Mother's Day. Yes. Yes. 
Mama, yes. <laughs> so this is the day we say a very, very special thank you to Mom and for all that she does for you and for all of us and things. So yes, you noticed I brought some tissues with me today. Tissues, yes. So this week, they're for blowing your nose. They're for blowing your, are you gonna teach my sermon now? Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> they're for blowing your nose. So this past week, my wife, had a very bad cold and she was also allergic to all the trees and the flowers are coming in. So she had the sniffles. Do any of you ever get the sniffles? Yes, yes, your nose runs and you're doing something and your nose, it keeps dripping. It's like, a, it's like the faucet that you haven't turned off. It just kept dripping. And she was using so many tissues that we ran out of tissues at home. So she asked me to go to the store and get her some tissues. So I went to my favorite grocery store, Trader Joe's. They have wonderful snacks in there, if you haven't noticed. So I went to my favorite grocery store and I saw this box of tissues. Well, there were lots of them, like different colors and everything. But when I looked at them, I was really, really, I thought this is really cool because not only is this box holding the tissues, but it's saying something to us. It's telling us something. So who can read that? What does it say there? What can you read that? I'm there when you need to pick up icky things. And then when we turn the box, What's it say there? Can you read that? I'm there when you're sick. And then, well, this one's kind of icky. I'm there when you run out of toilet paper. Yuck! Oh! <laughs> and then when we move over here, I'm there when you're sad. So I looked at that. that that's really cool because not only is it a box to hold tissues, but it's telling us how to that live. Funny. It's telling us how to live our life. And, and who does all these things? I'm there when this and I'm there with that. Is there somebody else that does that besides this box? Maybe Jesus? He is there for us all the time. Okay? He's there, he's there when we're sick and when we're sad. But he's also there when we're happy and when we're having a good time and everything is going. Jesus is with us all the time. So, so I thought this box, this is really kind of cool because it reminds us not only that the tissues are always there, but it's a reminder that Jesus is always there also. So I thought this would be a fun thing to just look at and see. And it's just a reminder, even when we have to pick up something icky, that Jesus is there with us. Okay? So let's say our prayer with us. Okay? And maybe the congregation will join us. Okay. Dear God, we thank you for always being with us. We thank you for being with us when we're happy and playing. And we're thankful that you're with us when things are sad and not good. And on this day, Lord, we give you very special thanks for our moms. We give you very special thanks for our moms. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. Well, you have a good day. If you would like to take a tissue with you, you can take one. Okay. Just pull. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming up. So I'm almost certain that you know the story, even before Mary told the story. If you haven't heard it here in church, you've probably heard it at a wedding or wherever else. John tells us this story about this wedding in, uh, in Jerusalem, not in Jerusalem, in, in Cana. Cana is that little rural village up in the very northern part of, uh, 
of Israel. It's just to the west of, of Galilee. And all we know from this story is that Mary was there, Mary the mother of Jesus, the disciples were there, and of course Jesus was there also. But as with so many of the gospel stories or any of the scripture lessons, you know, there's so much that it tells us, but there's also, it also leaves so many questions as well. Okay? We don't know whose wedding it was. We have no idea why Mary, why the disciples, why Jesus was there. All we know is that there was this wedding in Cana. So of course we know now, John tells us, that there was this major faux pas. Well, actually it wasn't a faux pas, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. Because you see, they had run out of wine. They had run out of wine in the middle, in the middle of, of the wedding reception. Now, today, in our culture, that may have just been maybe a faux pas. You know, weddings with the, with the, 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 the bridal couple, the parents, the family, some close friends, maybe some co-workers and so on, an afternoon affair or an evening, early evening affair. But we have to remember that in Jesus' day, in Jesus' day, a wedding, a wedding was this multi-day affair, this multi-day event. People would come from villages all over, and it wasn't just for the family, it was for maybe the whole community. So for them to run out of wine in the middle of this, it meant that all these people had come for, you know, they, they, would, they would leave, the wedding would be over. So Mary, of course, as we heard, goes to Jesus and tells him that they have run out of wine. And scholars, we're not really sure about why Jesus, he sounds a little curt, you know, that's no, no concern of mine. But in the very next breath, he tells the servants to fill those water jugs, those six water jugs, big water jugs, to go fill them, to go fill them with water. And of course they do. And then he instructs them to take some, take some to the, to the steward there at the reception. And of course we know when the steward tastes it, he realizes it's no longer water, but it's wine. And we're not talking $5 a gallon port from the local wine store. We're talking the very finest of wine. The very finest of wine, which normally at a wedding, that's served first. And then, of course, the inferior wines, are, now the wedding reception's been going on, and we're serving the very finest of wines. John tells us that this was the first sign of many. This was the first sign of Jesus revealing a little bit of who he was. A little bit of hint that indeed he is the Messiah. He is the one to reach out and as I just shared with the children who will surround us with his love. Last Sunday Last Sunday, Pastor Fritz shared with you that uh, we're spending these four weeks in May, these four weeks following, uh, following Easter. We're, following these, we're following these, using these four weeks to, uh, to, talk about, to talk about our values, our values here at Trinity. Values that help us, inform us, tell us how to carry out our mission as a church, how to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And of course, last week, Pastor Fitz shared with us that, of course, that, you know, at the very heart, at the very heart of our values is worship. The thing that we do every week, multi-week, sometimes multiple times in a week, as demonstrated by liturgically rich worship, celebrating God and so on, nurturing Christian disciples, through our worship. But today, today we're turning our attention to another aspect of our values. Today we're turning our, direct, our uh, attention toward, 
toward fellowship. And I apologize for those of you in the back, it's hard to read this, but this will be out in our lobby and you can see it closer um, later on. But we're turning our attention to fellowship, strengthening relationships within the body of Christ, embracing, embracing our diversity, the differences among us, as demonstrated by the deep and nurture, nourishing relationship within Trinity, where all, where all are welcoming. What we're saying is this is really, really an important way, an important part of who we are as a church, as who we are as Trinity. But as we read these words, as we read these words, you know, we thought, well, exactly how do we do this? What all is involved in this? We, we know about worship. We work, come to worship every week. But now we're getting a little more diverse. And how do we do this, this, this fellowship, this fellowship thing? My mind goes back first, first to that gospel lesson. I think about, I think about not so much the disciples, not even so much Jesus or Mary, but can you imagine, can you imagine all the guests that had been at that reception? Can you imagine as they leave and as they're on their way back to their villages, to their towns? Can you imagine the talk between those people? We were just at a reception. We were just at a wedding in Cana. You won't believe what happened. The water became wine. And, and that fellow Jesus was there. Can you imagine the stories when they get back to their village telling other people that weren't there what it must have been like to be there in the middle of that event I had to know that Jesus was there and maybe the things they've been hearing about him are true. Maybe. But then, maybe moving a little closer to our life, where we live. This past week, I had the opportunity to meet with a lot of your leaders from here in the church. And <clears throat> We spent an hour, an hour and a half, talking about the next six months here at Lennon. Talking about our calendar, talking about events that are going to take place, talking about each month we went through and what holidays do we, do we need to remember, what, 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 what special days, what, what activities do we need to remember. And we got to November. We got to November, and of course, obviously Thanksgiving and how we're going to observe Thanksgiving and then of course comes the first Sunday of Advent. But before that, before that we talked about another day that we observe here at Trinity, namely Veterans Day, November the 11th. We usually name the veterans and then have them maybe stand up or something. And I shared with the, I shared with the leaders <clears throat> that um, when my wife and I were, were running a, a bed and breakfast out in, uh, out in Lewisburg, every year, we, or rather early on, we, we got this idea. We got this idea that uh, every year on November 11th, or that weekend surrounding that day, we would, we would open up our inn, open up all of our rooms and things, and invite any veterans who chose to come and stay with us free, a free weekend, a free night, just, just as a way to say thank you. You see, neither in my wife's family or in my family, none of us, neither of us have ever had anybody serve in the military. So we thought, this is, this is our small way to say thank you. Thank you for enabling me to live my life as I live it because of your service. So we, we, we started this, and uh, within two or three years, we had not just a few people, but, but we had people waiting, in, waiting uh, on our guest list, uh, on our waiting list, to come in, because they wanted to stay and wanted to come and say, I'm, and, and, and at first we thought, well, maybe it's just because, well, it's a free night, after who, who, who's not gonna take advantage of a free night? And certainly we weren't doing it for money, to make, we weren't gonna make any money. 
But the real joy, the real joy we realized came the next morning. Not when they were checking in, but the next morning. And as they would sit in our dining room, each couple at their individual tables, they started to talk. They would reach over and, you know, well, where did you serve? What branch were you in? When was it you served? What country? And within, within a half an hour, the whole room started to become a buzz with conversation between this person and that person, and, and, and you could feel the energy in the room. I remember one year, one year normally our breakfast was serving like 8.30 to 9.30, quarter of 10. I remember one year, it was almost noontime, and they're all still yakking away, sharing with each other their experiences, giving each other their emails, or their, their, their phone numbers, their addresses. Are you going to be here if they do this next year? Are you going to be here next year? The fellowship that developed around their common bond. But for us, <clears throat> for Linda and myself, it went even a little bit deeper. You see, one year, I think it was about the fourth year we were doing this, I got a call from my friend Kurt, with whom I've been close friends ever since seminary. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Kurt called and asked, Bill, would it, would, it, would it be okay if I brought my parents? My father served in World War II. Of course, obviously, he was now in his early 90s. I said, of course. Of course, that's what this whole thing is about. Bring them. We'd love to have them. So, of course, that day, his parents came and they checked in and, and uh, <clears throat> got themselves settled. And that evening, a group of us gathered in our living room. And we had put out some, some sherry for them and some snacks. And the veterans just started talking casually, and Kurt's father started talking. And of course, he was the oldest one there, so the other veterans were all very fascinated by his, by his stories. And then as he started talking, as he started talking, he revealed the fact that not only had he served, but that he had been a German prisoner of war for 15 months. And for the first time, he shared some of his experiences of being a prisoner of war. Kurt, in his early 50s, never knew that his father had been a prisoner of war. And I share that, my friends, I share that to share with you the, that the manner in which the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit, when we are able to open ourselves up to those around us, when we can feel that it's okay, and we can allow others to come in. This is the power. It has the power to change relationships. Obviously, Kurt and his father, their relationship was then changed forever. But this is the power. This is the reason why we at Trinity see a fellowship and strengthening relationships. That's the reason why it's such a valuable part of our ministry. It's one of our top values. The power of the Spirit when we open ourselves to those around us and allow the Spirit to work within us. It can change relationships. Today, today I'm going to invite you. I'm going to invite you before, before you leave, during the peace, at the end of worship, I'm going to invite you to, to turn to that person, that person you've been sitting next to for, for, for weeks. I don't know what his name is. I see him. I see them. I see her. To turn him and ask, what's your name? I've been seeing you here every week, but, but I don't know your name. Anymore. Just to open ourselves up. Or maybe you want to go out and enjoy our fellowship out in the lobby. 
have a cup of coffee together. How are you? It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here today. Where were you? I haven't seen you. And that's the beginning. The beginning of what we saw in our home, in our own living room. The beginning of what can happen when we open ourselves up. And the people of God say, Amen. I invite you now, as you are able to, to stand and uh, <clears throat> as, we, uh, prepare, as we prepare to sing our a sermon hymn, uh, and it's in your Cranberry Red Box, okay? number 646, The Peace of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance so we can hold, can, we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant work, farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions on, of any level. Direct policy makers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. Today we celebrate Mother's Day. We give thanks for mothers the world over. We give thanks for all those who have nurtured and care for us, remembering especially birth mothers, adoptive mothers, surrogate mothers, aunts, grandmothers, 
teachers, neighbors, and all women who have shared their faith with us. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. We pray, compassionate God, for those mothers who have been hurt, disillusioned, or disappointed in their role as mother. We pray for those who have been denied a longed-for chance at motherhood, and for those whose years of mother mothering have been cut short by the loss of a child. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, we lift up before you the members of our human family around the world. For those who are afflicted or suffering at this time, for those who need healing, for those who require bread or shelter, for those who live in violent homes and communities, for those who are grieving and for those whose needs are known to you alone. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. We pray, compassionate God, for those mothers who have been hurt, disillusioned, or disappointed in their role as mother. We pray for those who have been denied a long-for chance at motherhood, and for those whose years of mothering have been cut short by the loss of a child. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, we lift up before you the members of our human family around the world. For those who are afflicted or suffering at this time, for those who need healing, for those who require bread or shelter, for those who live in violent homes and communities and are grieving, for those whose needs are known to you alone. Resurrected God, you see us for who we are and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transitions. Remember us that nothing can separate us from your love. Resurrected God, Hear our prayer. you bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. Resurrected God, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. People of God, the peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. I invite you to move about the worship space, introducing yourselves to one another and sharing that peace. Thank you. I'm Chris. Peace, peace. peace. As you finish sharing the peace with one another, I invite you to be seated. In just a moment, our, our, um, we're going to hear our musical offering together, but I want to share with you a note that we received last month as we began to celebrate the Easter season. Uh, dear Trinity Lutheran Church, just a quick note of gratitude from our Lansdale Elanon family group. We've been meeting in your church for over 15 years and want to express our deep felt thanks and gratitude for, us, for, for, for allowing us to use your beautiful facility. We meet Tuesday mornings in a bright, cheery classroom and use Zoom to reach out to people all over our wonderful country. Please know that God works in our group and many lives are touched by the work he does in our midst. In Psalm 3320, he is our help and our shield. In him, our hearts rejoice. God bless you all, Trinity. Elanon Lansdale, family. Thank you, people of God, for your generous gifts and for the ways that you support through your generosity uh, the ministries of our congregation. Without your gifts, your financial gifts, we wouldn't be able to keep the lights on in classrooms and TVs running so that way our Elanon group could connect over Zoom. 
And so I want to say thank you. If you would like to give a gift today, there are brown baskets on the altar rails. You can place your offering into it. There are envelopes in the pew racks in front of you. You can scan the QR code in your bulletin to give a gift electronically. Or if you're joining us online, head to trinitylandsdale.com and click on the Give Now button on the right side of the homepage. Let us continue by hearing our musical offering. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceful reign, and you welcome all us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to be celebrating Holy Communion together. But for those who are new to our, our congregation, we're going to invite those who are in the transepts to come forward first, then those in the nave. You're invited to come forward with your hands stretched out flat, 
A wafer will be placed in the palm of your hand. You're then invited to pick that wafer up and dip it in one of the two chalices that contain red alcoholic wine. On the brown table in front of each of the front pews, there is grape juice, gluten-free wafers, and individual sterile packets that contain bread and grape juice. You're welcome to help yourself to those elements if you prefer. After you receive your communion elements, you are invited to either kneel or stand around the altar rail in prayer and reflection as you commune before returning back to your seat. In front of each of the front pillars here by the hand sanitizer stations are a plastic bowl that you can place your cup into and our altar care team uh, will dispose of the cups at the end of our worship service this morning. People of God, I invite you to stand as you are able as we celebrate the Feast of Holy Communion. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give our thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise their name and join the unending hymn. which was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup and he gave thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take and drink this cup is the blood of my covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. in Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come and be fed. Thanks be to God. The assembly is invited to be seated. Here at Trinity Lutheran Church, we believe that this is not our table. It's not the bishop's table or the Lutheran Church's table, but it is God's table and all are welcome to receive Holy Communion. 
If you would prefer to receive a blessing, though, just let myself or Pastor Bill know when you come forward, and we'll be honored to offer a blessing to you. Let us continue together by singing the Lamb of God.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen, preserve you, and keep you to life everlasting. Claim your wholeness, live in for God's forgiveness, dwell in God's amazing grace, now and forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for worship. Um, thank you to Pastor Bill, who shared about our second core value of building relationships at Trinity. I know our phone board here is kind of hard to see for everyone, but as Pastor Bill mentioned, it's eventually going to find a home uh, out in our lobby. Uh, when you walked in this morning, you received a pink sheet of paper. For those of you who were here last week, you filled out the blue sheet on our values at worship. This week, we're asking you to reflect on our second core value of building relationships at Trinity. So there's two questions that we're asking you to answer. What meaningful experiences at Trinity help us strengthen the relationships we have with each other? And then what new ways can we strengthen relationships at Trinity? There are the white boxes that are out in the lobby. You can drop these in the offering basket or hand them to a council member who will probably be holding the white box uh, out in the lobby as well. And so you don't have to put your name, but we're compiling all of this data. Um, and, and it's just helpful as we begin to think about where is God calling us as a post-pandemic church into the future um, uh, to, to, to have some of these answers. And so thank you, Pastor Bill, for a powerful sermon on how the importance that relationships play in our community with one another this morning. Uh, uh, we have um, fellowship hour has been per, uh, prepared for us. We invite you to stop by. There are some snacks and some goodies. There's coffee and tea. Uh, Heisen Hall is open. That if you want to continue to build relationships with one another, we invite you to grab your cup of coffee. There are five or six tables that you can sit around in Heisen Hall and share coffee with one another or mingle in the parlor, on the couches, or at the stand-up tables, or in the lobby. Uh, you are welcome to. Uh, living the questions will continue this morning down in room 125, 127, which is go to the gym, take a right, walk down the hallway, and it'll be on the door on the left down there, as well as our intergenerational activity for our Sunday school happening today. This morning, it is with great honor and pleasure to introduce to you Pastor Britta Carlson. Come on up, Pastor Britta. Uh, yeah, we can clap. For those of you who saw my e-note um, that went out on Friday the congregation, Pastor Britta will be joining us as our interim coordinator for senior, high, and young adults ministry here, which is a part of our faith formation hub. We have been looking for somebody for well over a year and a half to serve in this capacity. And Pastor Britta is a colleague. Uh, she was ordained in 2015. She's rostered in the New England Synod, uh, lives here in Philadelphia, and is currently a PhD student in practical theology at Boston uh, University. Um, and, 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 and her husband, uh, Reed, is a professor at United Lutheran Seminary and an Episcopalian priest. And so uh, um, they reside, and she'll be helping us for the next four months. Her PhD program only allows her to work uh, when, this, when, when they're, they're not in session. And so she's joining us in an interim capacity until August 31st to help us discover how can we strengthen our young adult ministries. And, and when students graduate or, or are confirmed, when they graduate, we, we think that that's one way to think about it. They're confirmed in the Lutheran Church. How do we keep them connected? How do we keep them connected to our ministries and to our church so they can continue to grow in faith and in relationships with one another? And so welcome, Pastor Britta. It is so exciting to have you here. Would you like to say anything? Because we have a microphone that we can give you. Would you like to? Yeah. Could we, could we bring? Thank you. Um, there is also, we continue in May, um, uh, uh, our social ministry organizations are here. Lutheran Disaster Response is here this morning in the lobby, and you're welcome to stand by. Many of you know Julie, Julia Menzo, who is the coordinator for this region. She would love to talk to you more about how you can get prepared in there. Pastor Britta? 
Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I, won't, I won't say very much, just uh, wanted to give you my greetings and say hello to all of you. I will be here during fellowship time, so it, you know, feel free to, to stop by and say hi. I'd love to connect, and uh, you'll hopefully be hearing from me, seeing me over the next few weeks as I get to know the community of Trinity and get to know our youth and young adults um, in, in discerning this this ministry together. I'm very much looking forward to our work together this summer. So thank you all for your warm welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Britta. <laughs> Pastor Britta will be working about 17 hours per week in the interim coordinator position and for another 10 hours as a pastoral associate, uh, helping with visitation and leading worship and preaching and uh, 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 and home communions and funerals and all of the things that um, happen during the, the week in between our Sunday morning worship services. Uh, as our last, uh, 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 before we sing our sending hymn and hear Pastor Bill offer today's blessing, I'm going to invite our children to come back forward. I would love to have our children come back forward this morning. I need you guys' help with something. I'm going to ask you, can you find a favorite quilt? We need to bless these quilts until they go out to all the corners of the world. Congregation members, I'm going to invite you to either extend a hand in blessing or for you also to make your way to one of the quilts that are in the windows um, or up here on the altar. Find your favorite quilt and we're going to say a prayer of blessing over these quilts as we bless them and prepare them for uh, as they go to all the corners of the world. Some of these quilts are going to be used as blankets. Sometimes these quilts get used as floors and as rugs. Other times they're actually used as uh, ceilings in people's homes uh, around all over the world. And so we're going to bless these quilts this morning and ask God, uh, 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 God to, to, to dedicate them, go wherever these quilts go around all the corners of the world. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts a good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, the, kit, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns. Now we offer the fruits of our labor, the quilts we have made for you. We dedicate these quilts to your service, trusting that your love will go ever where each quilt is sent, making it more than just a piece of material, a collection of items making each piece we have created an expression of love. There is no way for us to imagine the power and effect of an act of love can have on a person's life. How you can use something as small as a quilt to radiate your love from us to the world. May these quilts be used in your service and become blessings for all who receive them. Lord, we know that all we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all our being. Draw our hearts to guide you. To, to, uh, draw our hearts to you to guide our minds. Fill our imaginations and control our wills, so we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Amen. Amen. Pastor Bill, would you send us out with your uh, with God's blessing? Thank you all so much. Thanks for your help blessing the quilts. I invite you, the assembly to please stand. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're sending him number 433, blessing, honor, and glory.
We are called to embrace diversity. diversity. We are called to connect all, all generations, generations to God's God. family. Go then to fulfill the call. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.